Yeah, it's very to say there's something like um, like the way it's set up in this kind of like monetary incentive. In a way, it's also the only possibility because otherwise people bankrupt. Remember my brother, I forgot the name of the company, but once he bought like an amplifier, which was it's similar as Fender, it's just kind of like a sister company that like competed with Fender and basically made the same machines. Oh, there's really good amplifiers. It's like a lifetime guarantee that they never broke down. They sold a couple of hundred and then they went out of business because the things never broke down, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, that's often the case with like if there's no planned obsolescence in the system. I mean, if the business cycle just like goes on, then the business doesn't exist. So that would actually be a good way to make comments. Yeah, I don't know, like I just put some things in this document the other day and then maybe today we could go through it. The idea behind it is a bit like to start writing on this document like ideas and then Mert is gonna kind of translate it. I guess he found a web designer. Yeah, shall I just like go through the document once then... Uh... Because I just, uh, maybe it helps also just to talk it through and then because I see that you looked at the document but um, maybe I just kind of go through it once also just for memory. Uh, wait, I try to share. Uh, okay. So basically, yeah, this whole thing that I wrote here was like this idea of uh, something kind of more poetic of uh, some kind of. Uh, way of thinking about it. Basically what I saw was kind of like a space that you can navigate through, a bit like the Google Maps idea, the Google Earth idea. But uh, probably much more simplified because that's like a huge uh, space. So then just this kind of place where you can walk through, like I looked a bit at these uh, uh, this website here, uh, which is like a way that they're using uh, WebAssembly to kind of put vintage games in, into kind of a browser environment. I'm not really gonna play the games now because my computer kind of uh, <laughs> doesn't like that. Uh, but this is kind of the idea that you have like a thing that runs in the uh, environment. So yeah, I, I don't know if it's Rust or WebAssembly, I'm kind of like uh, not so knowledgeable about which one that actually works best. But also Google Earth has been like designed through this kind of... Uh, so Figma uses this to kind of optimize a bit their uh, loading speed. Okay. So that's kind of the first idea was like what kind of environment, of course this is just uh, an idea. Then I found something on blockchain that is like running on near, which is kind of like a gallery space, but that's kind of like uh, to say they use this to kind of display the NFTs and then you can kind of walk around in it. But with me, if I walked around too much in these kind of spaces, I get a bit like seasick, you know, this kind yeah. of 3D side effect. Yeah. That's kind of like, I just found something that was okay, it, it's working on the blockchain, it does exist also on blockchain. And then uh, here I started to think about a bit like, okay, what's happening visually? So the whole idea behind this kind of thing is like that you see the edges of like dark matter. So the, the data itself would be like say like where the information is would be like invisible but that invisible space would kind of like show itself by its edges um, so yeah that's just like how the universe is kind of like uh, what they're trying to make visible also so in this sense it would be kind of that this dark space is here those are actually where the data is and on these little nodes like on the edges you would have like little nodes that you could actually interact with. It's a very vague idea, it's, it's very far from what I've been seeing on uh, 
Then just like Mr. Doop is also really funny. It's kind of what I thought of like what happens then if all this kind of uh, updates real time. <laughs> and then you get something like uh, I just try to find something that kind of uh... see what this does now. Yeah, so this is just like to show something like if it already exists, something that would actually move like uh, which has already code or like JavaScript in it. And uh, then I started to think of like uh, how this environment should look like. So this is just kind of like a visualization of um, the universe. But the weird thing with this is like it's the universe seen from a bird view perspective, which my question would be like, where would that then be if it's outside of the universe from a bird eye view? It's like, I don't know. It's kind of a funny <laughs> way to think about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would actually from the point of view from within the universe and actually looking out towards the perceivable edges or something. That's something that I was also wondering about. And then like regarding, uh, so okay, well, like what we have now is like a, a web browser environment as an idea. Possible, of course, on a, on a blockchain. So on a Web3 space that makes it move through the data, which would be the dark matter. And it's visible on the edges, which are accessible on the nodes. So these would be these little strings, it would be like the edges and the nodes. It would move a bit like this Mr. Do project. And so it would have this kind of constant motion. And it would be kind of a space that's visible from the inside out. So you would be always in it and it would kind <laughs> of expand infinitely. Uh -huh. And then where it should be or where I was thinking then like, okay, how it should be um, distributed like where are the servers or like wikileaks kind of thing is like or you know like uh, mega upload whatever like where is it based so it should be based somewhere and nowhere you no know, it's, it's the same problem in in turkey when they try to like shut down parts of wikipedia or something so if it's like a consilience library it should be decentralized as a storage space so that it cannot be censored and it cannot be taken down so then I thought about like the perma web, like uh, R weave as a possibility it can also be IPFS or uh, in food or all these other alternatives. So then what else? Yeah, then how does this thing actually interact? So if this is like the main space, you could say, like things that you land into, actually like it should update itself constantly by how a client if the client logs in with the wallet like that it kind of shows like okay this is the server browsing information like the person is going through the database or the person is kind of interacting with the library in a certain sense and this kind of updates how the black matter kind of moves between the edges then at a certain moment of course if a lot of people use this or when there's this kind of ideas of time cycles or this kind of iterations of libraries that it goes into a reset mode and it creates a new configuration so it's actually something that will never ever be the same thing twice so it will be just a kind of flux of information that sometimes resets depending on the time or depending on like the too much use of the of the memory of the whole system basically and then one thing that i thought about i made like a really crappy sketch of like how it would happen it's like okay if there would be text it would be kind of a reader that appears within the environment and then i thought about this thing from johnny mcmonic of like yeah <laughs> video also kind of appears as this kind of floating bubble so you never really leave the environment but within the environment there would be constantly things that appear when you touch on one of those edges then the question of like the wallet and like why would we need actually a wallet so i thought about like yeah maybe you receive tokens if you actually log in and that when you're browsing navigating streaming and reading you actually have some kind of incentive coming into your wallet 
And it would be really, really cool if it's not like I have to install a MetaMask and, you know, that, that it's just also within the environment itself. That somewhere here you actually have a place that you can log into a wallet or... Um, and then also that you can add, of course, information or things to the library when you are uh, approved by someone else. And then here I had just this idea of like with Google Earth that you can scroll and like make the Earth turn that we would actually use also this so that it wouldn't only be the interaction within the library that makes the edges move that it's also possible to just quickly navigate through it by choosing like okay I'm interested in this field so you wouldn't actually make the whole thing move I guess that's... Ah, oh, yeah, then I just had some ideas of like, yeah, if we're talking about embodiment, mostly we're just pushing buttons or we're like swiping things. So is there a way to think about embodiment differently? Is it like voice controlled? Um, do we look at the camera and do we blink twice to make it happen or not? You know, this kind of things of like, do we actually want to include other forms of thinking about how the body actually works if it's not by pushing the mouse or swiping things? So, yeah, then I just had a few questions on um, <laughs> just on my production mode because like I just make like pencil drawings which then I scan and I added them to a, a, PSD, a PSD file in Photoshop which I then morph so I was thinking okay maybe I should go the other way around because of course it's a whole different look if I would start with like coded imagery and then try to make it look more natural so I'm still struggling with this idea, so I think I will try to do this course or uh, find some other way to kind of uh, transform from uh, uh, from a very basic file. Because the question that I'm having is not like can we get the info from the edges, it's more like how do we get the volumes of the invisible pieces and how do you make those things move. And here are just like a few other uh, uh, matrix style kind of things. Then also, uh, like, uh, yeah, like the body machine interfaces from Cronenberg, from Existence, and some things from South Park <laughs> and the previous. Uh... Are there any like questions or like uh, what are your thoughts on this? Like, this is just like a first. Uh start of an idea of something. So maybe uh, if Letty has like her idea, she can also like... In this specification document, I find like it's beautiful because it contains all the things we have been looking at, like having this visualization. So it has like the time elements, so you can see the visuals from, from the outside of the earth, right? We have the mapping, which is like the curations, mm -hmm. Uh, interconnecting with each other and I feel like w with the thing you said about the how can we have someone in the library not using MetaMask but having your identification we maybe have to apply like an, an NFT ID so we, we should like having the avatars in the self-discovery game maybe we have an, a specific ID for that it can be like bright ID or a, or a protocol and we can just log into the library with this protocol so we we may be logged in the library with this id and which i didn't catch because i'm looking to the document uh, so ah yes so you are like wondering how we can visualize the information not only in the edges or like the volume but being able to discover the the dark matter yeah that's that we like maybe the uh our question but i find like this visualization is gonna help a lot and we can just have this navigation flow. Because I share these uh, library models and maybe we can have inside the library or inside the uh, yeah the, the user interface, we can have these models as a, as a node. You, you just can log in and you have these examples and maybe you can use the cards. Like I'm doing this research flow so we can have these nodes as a, as a draft or as a template you can use to, to create the, the, the resources and that maybe have uh, to, to, to get ideas to the curators. 
but yeah, I, I feel like this environment is gonna be like super navigational and very user friendly. And if Saturday you can have some ideas maybe to to relate this to the self discovery game for the avatars maybe. Well, yeah, yeah. When uh, Steph was talking about about what he was saying, um, I like the idea of the the flower. Um, anyways, the the you're you like you get the concealance library and that's like how you log in with the nft and then like over time of when you're interacting with the library and what you do um helps to build out your your flower or your your deck and so you kind of like uh, start to form your own role and then to find it with you like you're saying those cards and then every time what Steph was saying, you log into there, those cards and what how you interact with the library is how you navigate within the the larger um, matrix of, of data of these contact points of of the different models of the different points in uh, the flower, and you know like those those meshing points um, that we talked about. And I think, too, um, what I was thinking about was what I do in, in the Figma board is I've been branching out how these talks have been happening. And uh, basically, they're in the three um, creative uh, uh, process and, and dynamic energy flow. But I think like those are process within like developing your nft adventure like either side you may come in through the process yeah. side if you have like your own project or you might mm -hmm. like like the creative people seem to just like jump in and swim without having like some onboarding <laughs> like they could just yeah, like depends on the process you are like onboarding yeah. because it can be a different process so you don't know so it can be built up on that maybe there is a lot like yeah. the structured process, but the creative can just log in. What is this? And then yeah. it's like. And I think too your, for the yeah. for the creative, there there's like a portion within their processes where they have to go to like the process form where they're like, okay, I understand what this is now, and then like let me see where my part is, and then that's kind of like where they go and do the they because uh, I think what's happening in dynamic energy budget is like we're playing with the the flow uh, charts and making our own flow charts. But like, this becomes like a way, the, um, you know, concept, but like have this engagement where you're doing it as well as like this more of a um, creative process. So you're like erring on the side of a novelty instead of utility, but like that, that act of doing it helps you to be like, okay, I kind of get it. like okay, that's part of building your deck and then you use it however you want. So I think to like how the uh, process flow overflowed into creative flow is like creative yeah. flow flows into process flow depending on like their their own giant. Yes, if your avatar or your self-discovery self process, process, like you yeah. can go yes, full into creative mode. So it's like not so structured, let's see. But in the navigation, you, you can have like this structure as well because we will be seeing that connection. Because I'm feeling like we can use this again just as your self notepad, something that I will. Because yeah. I remember we were talking about this living log library. So we can use this also as a note taking or yes, your creative research flow. So it can be used. So yeah, you see this creative thing as well. Like there is no an established process, but if you want, you can find one. And if not, you can even navigate the other processes. So you will find like this thing of order if you want into the this earth visualization. I love this. Yeah, yeah I I think I, I see like how it actually can work together. Like what I've been writing about, it's. Uh coming from the question like there's so much information coming into Omega there's so much uh, art production and information production if I think about like algorithms like uh, that make like preferences you know this YouTube algorithms like a few clicks and you're in some kind of track I've been thinking like how can 
all the production that is happening kind of daily, kind of almost constantly, how can this actually be visualized? So some kind of database that is kind of interactive with how the person interacts and what the person is producing, or maybe even what the NFTs themselves are producing. Those information layers are maybe a form of dynamic NFTs with all the avatar system and the whole ID formation within it. Then at the same time that the library itself also is kind of a, a data system which is constantly regenerating itself. You can actually find if, if you actually have this on blockchain, you actually have the real time data of like, okay, this is if it would be a, a wiki, this was what Wikipedia would be at this given time. Next hour it would change, so the shape of it and the form would constantly be updated. So that, that's kind of like what I'm thinking about. So of course, it needs to be made in a way that it doesn't completely defragment everything because it can easily like the memory way too fast if it's built in a sense. So yeah, that's that's kind of how I'm thinking about things. How to not just like how to make art and to get it out there because everybody's producing, but very few persons actually have the time to adjust the information so also to create something that actually logs it or finds a way to bring it into a form and i guess a library is this kind of organizing form that then kind of has this kind of form as its archive but also as its kind of living archive so that's that's a bit like how i'm thinking about it. of course it should be navigatable so it should be easy but then my question is like how to make it easy without going back to this kind of thing of a navigation drop down with just like things to click on how to make something more intuitive but at the same time not too complicated so that persons can actually easily get through it yeah that's gonna be like the tricky thing but i feel it, it has two layers as you say like the visualization is this interconnected map and you may be logging it's like the home library and this can be like refresh it's i don't know it's 24 hours each week so you will have the information you yourself and like you see the the interconnections forming and it's regenerative so you feel like the art and all the creations are just developing from from the database but I feel like this navigation toolbar is also static. So if you want, you can navigate through metadata and you can see, click on the, I don't know, maybe on the, for disciplines, for NFTs, for single creators. So like the backend, you, you can just, you can search as if it's an archive. So you don't have like this structure or maybe it's too chaotic. So I feel for the contributors, we can just link the NFTs or the, bright ID or the uh, yes the protocol we are using for the people to log in and so you can search by this kind of different filters so I see like the mapping the, the resource the the, the uh, Kumu I shared something like that so you can also see a mind map of the relationships and that will also the dark matter interconnecting with the, the NFTs or the raising resources or the cards so I feel like this is one layer the contributors layer you can search for different filters and for the whole library, it's like the generative map we are talking. About. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree what you mean. Yeah, I think it can be very nice that it can have this kind of way of zooming out that you get like the Kumu view, you know, this kind of like the map, and that you can zoom in. You know, it's just as Google Earth idea that you can have these two layers of like that you're in the streets, but this would be done in that space that you can also see it from this kind of Kumo point of view where you actually see all the things like how they're interconnected. Yes, and so we have the NFTs, it would be like the chapters or the resources and those are linked to the ID of the contributor. So when we mentor chapters or books, those will be like, yes, the, those will be the rewards as well because we will be, yes, generating art and books and music. So I feel like this is the game as well, like if you can create your avatars, maybe connect the self-discovery game, you will be accessing different information. So we, you can just yes, navigate through the adventures as well. Yeah, and I think that goes back to those like soul-bound tasks. It's like, mm -hmm. you, you know, as you, you do your own um, curation process, it's so it's like, you know, you're, you're bringing your own 
valuable mental models that helped you on your own journey. And as you're like curating that or you're helping someone else curate that, you, you create these like um, different things that, that come out of, like I think for instance right now it's forming out of a uh, dynamic energy budget. It would be like if you, if you curate one of our cre uh, creative uh, value flow charts with us, you get like you know a certain uh, special like attribute into your nft and then so like okay then you you have that like soul bound task and it's like um so part of the game too is like building up your own deck <laughs> and then like later is your journey is like telling how you combine your deck and like what 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 how that helped you and you know whatever whatever it is uh, on that model yeah, it's great because we are just following the three processes, like process research created. So I feel like we have that as a portal into the library as well. In CD, yeah. yeah, the incentives are built into the NFTs and, and into the creation process itself. We don't need to think about different ways of incentivizing this because those are our workflows. That is beautiful. Yeah. And, and going back to uh, like the navigating, like more um, hmm. in like the text form or whatever but uh steph did you have an opportunity to to do anything with the what was it the yacht form or something like that? no i've been extremely busy i will do the yacht form when i get my yeah. mind around when i finish you know i need to rent out the room soon because it's uh, midway the month so i've been doing a lot of other work which is yeah. not computer so i'll get it done before because when hopefully because i think your idea too of like this um simple and then getting more complex is like a good way to help um you know even even for like the beginning to either figure out your curation process or even uh starting you know uh mapping out your own curation thing um which which is helpful um when we're talking about different ways to navigate the data they feel like this is mind mapping. Can we also use like the back end of Kumu, for example, and build that in the open environment in this custom, well, in this WOSM environment? Yeah, this is like things that I really don't know. So I've been putting things together because I'm really not good at coding. So I just looked at things that I know are existing. And I think Mert said something about like finding a web designer. So everything I'm posting is coming from like a visual art point of view. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at things like, ah, how does this move? How does this work? How could it actually work together? So just uh, the one thing of like seeing the Google Earth little globe thing, thought about like, yeah, this kind of spinning effect that you actually see the thing on the screen spinning if you spin the flower, that you get actually to see how the environment of, of the library would actually interact with this interaction of like turning the flower this kind of compass idea this i kind of liked a lot it's, it's kind of different than like the hamburger menus mm -hmm. that's kind of one thing that i thought could be nice to you know like in, in music often you just have like a knob that you can turn and like things move on the screen so it's a bit this kind of idea to see the flower is this kind of like or maybe just seeing like if you touch on the overlaps of the fields that like the thing on the screen just interacts with like this micro micro macro kind of effect so that's one way of i was thinking about the navigation the other thing that i'm still thinking about is like how to go one step beyond of thinking of dynamic nfts and Thinking in the sense that if there is someone in the library or has been in the library and moved something there, it might actually affect a bit like what I'm working with. So this is like maybe a bit too much abstract to think in that sense. That would actually mean that all the NFTs that are there, like if they're being produced, that there is an interconnection between them and that they are kind of like responsive to each other somehow. To make this, I don't really know yet. I just know a bit about like dynamic NFTs and layering NFTs. Hmm. How to make them actually interact with each other. That would be kind of... A... I think that's difficult from the technical point of view because I know like the NFTs project that are launching their tokenomics as generative art, they do that like in the 
original code so you have the nft and then you have there are like uh, certain types like in two weeks this nft is not gonna be for example an egg but you see like the little chicken coming out of the edge of the egg and it's like in two weeks time so it's like very uh, deterministic and i don't think there is a way to produce generative art with different nfts at different moments of time so maybe what we can do is like generating the info to correlate those or having the mind maps between those but i feel it's like difficult to impact your nfts you can just maybe have rewards of connections but maybe it's difficult to yeah to impact that in a creative way because these mm -hmm. nfts are like code from the very beginning when you when they emerge or or change then, it's like a, a specific program then it should be okay there are nfts within an environment that is running on a game engine that mm -hmm. uses a cryptocurrency as its gamification strategy so there would be three layers like a game engine environment maybe this web assembly thing nfts that are actually within it and create this kind of avatars and the whole thing with like identities and like building mm -hmm. aspects and then how it interacts would actually be uh maybe map. like the, yeah like a map as, a, as the web environment but then the code engine would also be like monetized through like maybe like the the currency of token engineering commons mm -hmm. that there could be actually three uh Basically, then you would have NFT stores within a kind of fungible environment running in a game engine in the browser. I don't know if that sounds maybe too complicated, but... Uh... That would take away this kind of idea of, uh, of having those NFTs as like predetermined and it would actually allow for like multiplayer setup where actually things are happening real time. Yeah, the thing is maybe like we keep this original idea that it was like transmedia and transdisciplinary. So as long as we can produce music, uh, curation chapters, uh, NFTs that represent curation. So I feel like we have to keep this idea. And maybe yeah, it's it sounds like very technical and complicated from the coding point of view. But maybe we don't need to code everything from scratch because I feel like we are using um, different layers and maybe thinking what is like easier to put from the very beginning and then add complexity because if we feel like we have to crack up this uh, gamified experience from the very beginning it's gonna be too long maybe but we can crack up like the super mvp we have uh the browser then the id for the people to to log in and the yes like templates or two or three templates and we can just build from that to 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 think how the NFTs are going to be interconnecting to each other. Yeah, that, that this great. Yeah, and then there's like a lot of space to make all these crazy ideas come through. And yeah, that's, that's maybe good for the first version to have like a smaller... Uh... But you know, yeah, like the beta. Yeah, but definitely within you know the project there a research group on you know nft self-discovery game is when we explore these more wilder ideas right <laughs> yeah yeah i feel like it's it's going together but maybe we need like this super basic yeah. user interface for the library and then it's gonna connect to the nft game so we don't need to, to build everything uh, yeah. completely yeah. and then merge into the yeah the, the interface i think i think Yes, because then I start building from your avatar. From there, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. your process, like more creative or more yeah. research or, you know. No, yeah. but maybe, yeah, you can use that or uh, developers or some creative designers are using also Figma for uploading the designs or a GitHub repo. And in everything you do, like you, you convert it, be it an image or an object, you upload that to the uh, to the repo in GitHub or Figma Jam, and you have those like available for anyone to use. Okay. Uh, they can just view the um, images. I mean, like let's say there are like some animation or object right away mm -hmm. from that. That's... Yes, like creating okay. a repo on GitHub or Figma. I, I, the other one is Figma Jam. 
you can upload yeah. those. Or... But then I was thinking if if I put them on Figma gem, I see that you can in Figma you can have this kind of JS output of the thing that it converts. But I was more thinking before I put like a PSD file there. Um, maybe I should go in After Effects and try to make it more 3D, or go in Blender and make like a model of it. That it, you know, if it's this kind of uh, if it's a flower that scrolls and it needs to turn around as a globe. Now it's just a flat image, so I think there I need to find a way to to remake them somehow. Or... Like that 3D image in, right? You need something yeah. to make those 3D. Yeah. You know, like that should be like an room. AI tool to do that. So it was the other day to my drawings, some kind of digitized image, and I thought they were like some AI tool, just up the file, and it's yeah, create something like more. I don't know. AI, maybe. Right. I, I cannot recommend. Okay, I'll do more research then. The whole idea is like that you, you know, when you're in the rainforest and you see all these things and you walk through it, that is green things that you can actually like navigate through them. If I find a way to make it, I'll, I'll try to find out. Otherwise, in the meanwhile, I will already just put all the images there. And then, because Mert, I think, is gonna go through Miro. So maybe I, I put it in a repository or something. That's maybe the easiest. Yeah. Hey, uh, Shreemur D, how's the music going? Here. Um, like first time today, I tried it in like outside in a cafe. It was oh, yeah? like I got some coffee, and yeah, cool, cool. it was like inside there was a music, and then kind of tried to make it go with that music a bit, oh, okay. but like less than a minute or something. I just yeah, the default samples, not much, but. Um, since one week, I've been only writing like smart contracts, and uh, but really um, thinking of that, um, making music with Git uh, versioning system, and let's say it's like a conversation, like can be revisited, and then from that. Uh, so any um, what I mean is like revisiting some moment again was something um, I was thinking what if stuff that people already said become a center of discussion and go into their branch if wanted and then dive into you know um, also, stuff like that, a video can be like a interface where you say like request for connection. Yeah, uh, like some kind of feedback loop of where you're like, okay, this this part of the video or whatever is, is the part that I want to kind of like pull on that thread, right? Yeah, like a stream like this can start like five people, let's say there is a minimum or something, you know, they can decide. But lots of people, I feel like if I would be able to connect or uh, find ways of communication, then that would be better. And same for, you know, but yeah, making that music with <laughs> um, branches like that, like, hey, let's um, fork in this version and then maybe a sovereignty given to artists like hey they control like uh, maybe they, they will be the person that will decide future versions mm, are you saying this agora because I think you, you use that work in the library like we feel we need to maybe self-identify ourselves in our avatars, but maybe anyone can just 
go there and start creating with anyone else, as you say, like if I see an, a nice piece of music that you did in the library and I can fork or I can join you. Also. So it will be like the creative flow, maybe. We can just come in and say, well, we, we are creating a piece of music together. So it's like an adventure we can just create together. Is that what you're envisioning maybe with creative library or is more is more general in the web free space? Actually, um, if I may share one thing, I guess I will be able to find it. Yeah, but also too with the, the music. Yeah. Later, I will share it. Um, with the music you're using, what's it called again? And he's building a repository too, right? That we could kind of like all kind of put into it. Yeah. Yeah, like several web free. There are like several. I could show that one maybe while we're here. Like this one, like we use. So this is processing actually. Anyways, so like this is music uh, repository. They are all music and uploaded to here. And we can basically each is like this tool is using Ruby language, and the tool is this Sonic Pod, and uh, it's actually so like uh, there's something with audio when I use this app uh, on Mac. I make sure like you the audio is very, very loud, like with the feedback. Yeah. yeah. You can just take it and run it, you know, or change it. But fork this uh, library um, like this, but it could be anything else, you know, like it could be communities repository so that uh, everything happens to these files and their versions on main branch could be shown as their most up-to-date or consensus mode or whatever, you know, or like browse can start from there and then we can see those that started with these or I don't know, new all the branches here actually could be uh, potentially. And yeah, that was maybe can use data and shape this one. That stuff like this, that. Yes, this generated space you're showing, it works with image and different categories, or is like the repo from GitHub? Yeah, they they got all each uh, their repos as well. It's really good project. Uh, um, actually, uh, there is that's one. Bit what Steph was looking for, because if yeah. Uh, yeah, that's also. Yeah. I'm gonna use these open libraries too, and also processing language, actually mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, in these and 3JS kind of, but yeah, uh, this one I'm up, uh, I put here like some of my uh, drawings, just like traditional and paintings, and then that uh, filtered them and generated some art. So I'm quite, I really, really liked uh, what it generated, like. Remind me of some, you know. That's right. Yeah, but you know. And I, yeah. Yeah, it's like. I really like how they con connect. As if, like. I don't know. Yeah, you see, like, it's the same experience, so it's generating. Based or 
Yeah. Generating it. So, so and it, yeah, it, it's something yeah. also comes from you, you know, like it's a machine interpretation or. Yeah, like this more automated process, which is in the cloud also. Yeah. Another thing. Of, that would be cool to uh, bring that on like i need to visualize that really like music version in branches like difference yeah. like using git commands for this collaboration just maybe simplify that at the very beginning for anyone to enable like he or she can generate art from the library maybe they like the uh, yeah and in that code, we, we are importing uh, assets like samples. Uh, for that, actually, library, you know, can be also providing samples a lot from community and they could be part of uh, those. And what matters is always how, if there could be some uh, economical model around that, like how yeah. it could be. I was thinking, just like very raw and didn't want further hey like food like if you get some nft from uh, one branch like from let's say from this state you know and then if there are like new music made with those uh, parts yeah. uh, then you could also get something you know I was thinking Just about getting some rewards from your VAT can go yeah. right in the incentive economic model. Yeah, yeah. Like Thank you. Thank you for this generated dot space. So, Steph, please <laughs> visit that. <laughs> I will say that I had yeah. no concept when you guys talked about music that this is what you're talking about. Because this is as far from music as I can imagine a thing being. Because I, but I'm glad you're doing it. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, I I have no idea uh, what you guys are talking about. So that's uh, neat that you're going that direction. You know, I was thinking, uh, Streamer D, like, just real simple of like having this feedback loop with the um, video is like if you get in the portion of that talk about like what you were saying about the music maybe you, you click on it and then there's like a tutorial how to like use the repo anyways i was just thinking about that yes maybe we have like three or two or three guides like you want to use this for music then we have like these two or three or four templates right so for a book for a chapter so you have to yeah we need like a Mm -hmm. If you want to source a chapter or a book, it's like easier because you have a template. So we have, we built like two or three cards. That is like the, this template draft we used from the very beginning, but it was not very useful. But maybe we can build like two or three beautiful cards. Like this, the matrix for the Gonski library is like, yeah, like the same thing, but we have the template. But if you want to curate, you, yes, we have like this uh, video guide, like this minute. You. you uh, I also really think that it would be very nice to have the the curator's template. Uh, I'm gonna work on it to, to create it within another form, but when I was writing for the library, I immediately started to think of like, this needs to be really part of the same environment. But from a visitor point of view, you kind of arrive at the library, you can discover it, you can build the avatar, you can get involved in it. And if you want to contribute to it, that it's also this curator's process and the peer-to-peer -peer validation or something, that there is a way to contribute, but within the same environment. Because sometimes I feel a bit, it's, it's the main feedback that I read, that it's too fragmented. Um, yeah, I, I, I first will just kind of work a bit on another template. It would be really cool to have all of this integrated within the library itself. Yeah, that, that was like the main feedback about 
we are collecting all these things, but we cannot have the repository for everything. We start going in this direction, you know, have uh, a better template. But I guess if we kind of build something that is the super MVP that is very, very agile and lean, and we have this browser experience, maybe the ID process to create the avatar and then the experience inside the library to be able to create with three or four examples. And yes, and, and as a step set, you create your experience from your uh, NFT or your, yes, your, your process or your creative or anything you want to create. Because I feel if we yes mix up of all the things we have been talking about, I feel like that's the MVP. But let's try not to do it super complicated or everything at the very beginning because it's gonna crash. Yeah. Uh, maybe, I was gonna say maybe we can or we can start some um, like repository uh, like GitHub organization and then uh, we can start uh, adding some development related stuff there like architecture or actually I'm quite supporting the idea of let's say a community gives a, the idea and implements with one language let's say but then others feel free to implement in, in other languages and then that's also uh, but yeah it could be maybe good idea to start something and then I could drop some code there um, including website and uh, connecting existing efforts um, and then building on that uh, to make it easier to see like where everything is or open to outside a bit more if That's you want all. you can send you the the login from the there is a github re repository from the previous version of the website if you want, I can just send you all the info by message and then you can build from there. Sorry, it's too much. Like, we can make or you can create one and we add you as a team and we start building from that way with all the ideas. Okay, yeah. I have a question about this. So we're often talking about onboarding and making things easy for people to come into and so on. And I get that this is a, a place for token engineers. So I just, I do wonder, um, in the Omega group, I don't know what, I'm a little confused about the, the role of a GitHub music repository in the Omega group. So maybe I missed the plot here somehow or... Uh, but <clears throat> I'm I'm also curious. Or library. Well, yeah, I, I just you know I I'm just yeah I just I'm missing something. So it also it just seems like um, you know not only are we just the proliferation of platforms is pretty extraordinary. So the moment I started talking to people about how I was going to do the do the website for <clears throat> you know gravity, I was inundated with. Figma boards and uh, just five different platforms of things that people wanted to show me different resources and different things and you know so I don't know it's just a very programmatic version of a of a thing that we are calling music so when I heard music I was like oh okay I'll like share a band that I like or something I didn't I didn't understand that we were talking about music and even more than that I didn't understand that we were going to talk about it, you know, in terms of GitHub, and that we we're going to then go down this road of, you know, on, you know. So I just imagine somehow that it would be a bit of a barrier to, to onboarding to a understand the role of music in the Omega Group, and then second to carry that off to, you know, um, to like the programmatic side of the thing. I'm not slagging off anybody, or I just I'm I'm I feel that I'm I'm missing something. Yeah, you just missed that was not the center of conversation, but um, oh, okay. some some uh, some tool we can give and then that helps creating something together, you know, like, but that was just, I think, going to be uh, some, some project that I was going to start anyways. It's just about art actually being uh, also in the blockchain 
uh, something center. Actually, I got some other project just for around that, like really asking people, hey, like, what's your taste in the arts? And let's talk about arts and show that cities are connected like that and stuff. But on these parts, it's more like collective intelligence and artistic version of it, like with data people can provide or any data like um, could be turned into artwork. Yeah, I like that. Like you feel like uh, sharing music and even uh, being put in contact with other people that are creating music. That has value because in the web free space with this, you shared ample and there are like several music uh, repositories but then it's like another tool but in here i feel like we are doing this in in a context and even as a creator you can find people and value to do that it's not like you are creating alone your music or your artist it's like we have the the context and maybe you, yes it's like i feel this is different because we are providing yes it's a back end at the end of the day but we are embedding this into different values. So I see the value of creating alongside others and within a created space. Itself. And in here you could discover like several ways to for your thinking or your endeavors to yes, to make those valuable and to see these interconnections. Maybe we feel that it's yes, maybe it's too programmatic for some people, but I see this is different from the beginning, like to the other repos or the other Creating spaces, and I feel this is the novelty we talk about, I and it's in itself something different. Yeah, yeah, I, I, w I was imagining it was something like that. I was just trying to figure out how, <laughs> how to connect. So thanks. Mm, yeah, because it's not like an static web to base in which you find people, and it's like an email, and you connect to these people. It's something novel in the way you can just yes, came into here from a very different place that I we maybe don't know where these people come into here, but then they create and they discover, they gain values and interconnections. So the navigation itself is super different. So I feel this novelty. And well, for someone it's maybe something very normal, but I see the whole experience is embedded for principles. So I feel this is what we are trying to create in, in Omega as well. Um. Douglas, what, what, um, did you have any more thoughts about the website or anything else you wanted to share? So are, are we doing a, a website for Omega? Who's doing it? How are they? How are we doing it? Is it was that part of the conversation I missed? I'm sorry. No, this is like this is the back end of the gamified library. Oh, OK. We're imagining so, but it has nothing to do with this like, classic way of Webs, which you ask your client with industry, do you do tell your keywords and this little thing? So it's completely opposite, and we are not creating a branch for us. So we are reimagining the experience, and this is the value flows we have been experienced in six months, which is embedding these attributes and capacities. So it's discoverable, and people who come here can. Yeah, I was saying, can you hear me now, Wall, or I'm Oh, yeah, up? that's way better. Much better. Yeah, so much better. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was this, uh, saying that this experience is the, the way of doing this consilience library, which is not a Web2 static process of building a library, but it's like new in the way that we are trying to connect this uh, experience with the self-discovery again that Satori is building with their NFTs and their archetypes. So any one of us or anyone interested or has these super mind-blowing questions saying want to experiment this in this novel way okay. will be using this NFT self-discovery game and those are like the curators which are linking to the archetypes and the archetypes themselves are gonna yes discover new things which are this dark matter we are trying to provide value so it's nice in the way that it's connecting to all the things we have been talking in the past year yeah. really yeah it you know, everything about NFTs is um, prohibitively um, weird to me, so I I almost check out every time. So I, I have profound uh, uh, learning challenges around some of the Web3 stuff that 
Did you have a moment to look at the document? Because I was just writing some ideas and we were going through it and it would be nice if you have like other ideas or things that connect to it somehow or... Yeah, for me it's also a very steep learning curve, so... Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a... I have to... I have to say no to some things, <laughs> so this is just that, I guess. <laughs> so I'm sorry. But uh, I, I don't mean to bring everyone down. I was just trying to understand in general what you're dealing with. And I, I, I'm very supportive of whatever cutting edge thing you're doing. I just am having a hard time understanding it. So I was trying to contextualize generally what you were doing without getting too deep into it. So thanks. Yeah, if you want, I can give you a very short summary. It's, it's building an environment which kind of updates depending on who is actually interacting with it. So probably it has to do with, uh, I guess it's analytics on a website, that everything that happens on a website actually has effect on how it appears. And then, of course, how to work within Web3, so how to work with all these decentralized forms and NFTs. And so this is a bit the idea that's behind it. Of course, it needs to be a very solid start as a MVP, and then from there to see which kind of features can be added or how it goes from there. And it's a lot about like finding which workflow and how to work together with like very different levels of knowledge, like. Personally, I don't have coding knowledge, but others do. And then finding other ways of actually trying to build something different than what already exists. Like I'm always trying to think of like, okay, what is the problem that NFTs or the blockchain isn't solving? So what is actually the thing where the real value exists? I see a lot of this value is within this kind of conversations within those meetings of actually persons thinking together or sharing information I'm constantly thinking about how this information itself can actually be part of that library so that's kind of where the technicality is kind of a, a big question yeah no go you i mean i'm, I'm encouraging you and everything i'm just uh, uh... yeah this is just a place i can't follow you so thanks <laughs> Yeah, actually today I will have to go soon also. I, I still have another meeting with uh, friends appearing. So. Yeah. It, uh, so like the NFT is like first the library card, right? <laughs> but we're thinking about making it dynamic and the relationship between you, either the creator, or the user of the library, and then those contact points within the uh, crypto flower. I think that's where mid step are thinking about. Yes, and I feel that the basic specifications we're looking for, so maybe we can build from that very basic ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Quote unquote basic. <laughs> this is not very basic. Yeah. <laughs> Like we have this simple uh, NFT plus mind mapping, and we yes we will emerge from that, and and maybe we can just go that into a new GitHub repo to as streamers say maybe we yes if people come in and say yeah this is our very basic backbone, then it can grow in itself. But we have this beta, and we see how this emerge in terms of relationships or so doing that generative. That I feel like it's super beautiful, but I guess it's more complicated. But I feel this idea we talk about having the avatar or the NFT uh, as a very starting point is going to create a creative process in itself and it's going to generate the connections with the music, with the means in the chapter of resource, and doing this in this generative way. I feel that's, uh, and, and I like the notes and the stuff, the, the resources he shared at the beginning with this plugging into the earth and this visualization. So I feel, yes, we can build from this. And maybe we need to also only flesh out the specs and then we ask for someone else also to come in. So this is our beginning. And then if we need someone else, we also can do that from our budget, maybe. 
Yeah, I, I think Mert mentioned that he might have found someone, but this is, uh, yeah, so I think, yeah, it's good to get the specs done and then... Right, so Satori, should we wrap up this and maybe yes. just build from that? Streamers say, can you please stream and create the GitHub repo so we can just add that what you shared and these specs and we have that in there? Yeah, sure.